Biology is the study of living things, and in order to understand how living things work, it is important to know how their smaller, non-living components function. So we can look at a complete organism, like a human, and say that it is living, and break it down into individual cells that are also living. But if we zoom into the molecules that are found within the cells that make up the cell, those individual molecules on their own are not alive. It is the combination of all of the components together in which new properties emerge that we classify as living. But again, those small, non-living chemicals play an important role with how the cell and how the organism functions. So, starting with chemistry and how it supports life is a natural place to begin our journey. Components that make up living systems are made out of matter. We can break that down and start at the atomic level, in which atoms consist of protons, neutrons, and electrons. With the protons being the defining characteristic of each element on the periodic table, atoms can hold charges and in many cases hold chemical bonds with other atoms. When atoms are bound together with other atoms, they create compounds and molecules. These are then put together to create cells, and cells are put together to create tissues and so on through organs and systems until we get a complete organism. Molecules are extremely important when it comes to the workings of biological systems. The cells that make up our bodies are composed of many smaller molecules that have specific functions. We will talk more about specific biological molecules in later videos, but just understand that this hierarchy of how biological systems are structured is very important. For the remainder of this first video, we are going to focus on one specific molecule, called water. Water is extremely important to biology because all living organisms are connected to it. We obviously have to drink water to survive, which our body needs in order for materials to be transported, where unicellular organisms, and all cells for that matter, are filled with water that makes up a percentage of their cytoplasm. This again is a medium in which materials can be moved and reactions can take place. The chemical formula for water is H2O, as it consists of two hydrogen atoms that share chemical bonds to one central oxygen atom. These chemical bonds are called covalent bonds because the electrons are being shared between the two atoms. It ends up taking on this bent shape, which is important, so always draw the hydrogen atoms this way in relation to the oxygen atom. It can exist in different states like solid ice, liquid, or as a gas, which we call water vapor. For biological systems, liquid water is the most essential. Water plays a very important role within living systems because of its unique properties. Without these properties, life as we know it would not exist. There are a few properties to go through, and we'll start with talking about polarity. Water is a polar molecule. This means that there is an unequal distribution of charges throughout the molecule, causing one side of the water molecule to be partially negative and the other side to be partially positive. The electrons shared between the bonds of the hydrogen and oxygen are pulled closer to the oxygen because it is more electronegative. And because the general shape of a water molecule is bent and uneven, the pull of these electrons causes charges to form. This does not happen with evenly distributed bonds like we see in methane, where the poles of electrons are evenly distributed and it does not create polar ends. An easy way to tell if a molecule is polar or not is to ask yourself, can I draw a straight line through this molecule and have all of the positive charges on one side and all of the negative charges on the other? If you can do that, the molecule, or at least the part of the molecule, should be polar. Illustrating that here, we can see that a line can be drawn through the water molecule to separate the charges. But there is nowhere I can accomplish that with the methane molecule, which means that it is nonpolar. Okay, so back to water. This polarity is important because within the world of physics and chemistry, opposite charges are attracted to each other. So when multiple water molecules get together, the negatively charged side of the molecule with the oxygen is attracted to the positively charged hydrogen end of another water molecule. This forms a weak but very relevant bond called a hydrogen bond. The hydrogen is important here, as our hydrogen atom at this point is acting like a positively charged proton because the electron is being pulled away from it. If this attraction takes place between this proton and another atom that is negatively charged, we can classify it as a hydrogen bond. In addition, because water carries these charges, it can also be attracted to other charged substances that are not water. Substances that carry charges and are attracted to water are classified as hydrophilic, while other substances that do not hold charges tend to repel water and are classified as hydrophobic. Methane, because it is nonpolar, does not have any attraction to water, so we could call it hydrophobic. You will see examples of hydrophilic substances on the next few slides. 
Water polarity and hydrogen bonds define other important properties of water, which include cohesion, adhesion, and surface tension. Cohesion, which describes the ability of water molecules to attract and stick to other water molecules, is the first important property. As we can see in this image, this is mainly due to the polarity of each water molecule and the formation of hydrogen bonds. These negative and positive charges keep the water molecules together, making them more difficult to pull apart compared to molecules of some other liquids. Cohesion between water molecules plays an important role in biological systems, like when water is moved within plants. Plants have specialized tissue within their root, shoot, and leaf systems called xylem that is used to transport water and nutrients. Water is absorbed by the roots of the plant and moves up through the stem to the leaves to transport nutrients and be used for photosynthesis. As plants stand erect to grab as much sunlight as they can, the upward movement of water is fighting against the force of gravity which is pulling it down. The process of transpiration, paired with the property of cohesion, allows for water to make its way up despite the pull of gravity. Just like the blood in our bodies, the water within plants needs to constantly be moving, and transpiration is a process that describes how plants give off water vapor through the stomata of their leaves. With water constantly evaporating and leaving the plant, it leaves room for more water molecules to move up and replace what was lost. This tension created by transpiration pulls the next water molecule up, and because all of the water molecules are held together by cohesion, it ends up pulling all of them up together, all the way down to the roots. There are other forces at play here, which we will discuss later, but this is how cohesion plays an important role. In addition to plant xylem function, the property of cohesion is also utilized in different ways for different organisms. The water strider is an insect that leverages the property of cohesion to move across bodies of still water without sinking, meaning they can literally walk on water. This is possible because the cohesion of the water molecules, built up by the hydrogen bonds, requires more energy to break than what is exerted by the insect's specialized hydrophobic legs. So the water molecules continue to stick to each other instead of breaking formation to wrap around and submerge the insect. We call this characteristic surface tension. And without this cohesive property, this surface water habitat would not be possible for the water strider. Another, similar, important property of water is adhesion, which describes how water molecules can be attracted to and stick to other surfaces. Just like cohesion, adhesion can be explained by the structure of water molecules and their polarity and hydrogen bonds. Surfaces that are polar or possess charges that attract water molecules cause them to stick. To talk through a few examples, we can see this happening in soil and also in plant xylem. Let's start with soil. Soil is a mixture of many substances that includes organic materials, minerals, water, and air. Of all of the materials found within soil, some of them possess polar properties. For this reason, water is able to create hydrogen bonds with and stick to the soil, allowing it to move through porous, air-filled spaces, replacing it with water and making the soil wet. This type of movement is called capillary action and can even force the water to move up towards the surface of the soil if it's dry compared to deeper layers that are wet. This is good for plants to be able to continuously absorb available water through their roots. Our next example of adhesion is with plant xylem. We already talked about how cohesion helps the water molecules stick to each other to be pulled up, but the property of adhesion is also at play here. The wall of the xylem tube is made out of polar molecules, and because water is also polar, the xylem wall and the water molecules are also attracted to each other based on their charges. This pull and attraction from the water molecules to the xylem wall helps create tension that supports the upward movement against gravity, very similar to what happens in the soil. 